Matthew, people think oh. that anti-natalists are hypocrites. They think that okay, um... are having a good life. Why would you not want somebody else to enjoy the same good life that you have? I mean, look at yourself. You're, you're a happy man, as I see. Why would you deprive some others of the same joy? You have a flaw. So can I? Sure, sure. Please go okay. ahead. OK, OK, OK. Um, first of all, the, the, the question has um, a, a good number of premises upon which it was asked that are not necessarily true. Uh, the first one is uh, the notion that antinatalism is about maybe the antinatalist himself, the particular individual. That's one of the, the, the most popular erroneous notions natalists have about antinatalism and antinatalists. Now, it's actually not about any one particular individual. It's about the collective lot of the human race both those who are existing and those yet to be brought into this existence. Now, uh, the question of if you, you are happy, why would you deprive uh, others of, of uh, experiencing happiness? Now, uh, first of all, I, I, I would want to say, uh, you know, if you remember your high school physics, I, I usually don't like to be academic. I like the simplest explanations possible for anything I'm, I'm explaining. But if you remember your high school physics, if you, if you did uh, physics, or at least from your general knowledge, you have positive, uh, negative, positively charged particles, negatively charged particles, that's um, okay. protons and electrons respectively. Then you have okay. neutrally charged particles, your neutrons. So it's a false dichotomy to assume that uh, if somebody is not happy, he's sad, or if he's not sad, he's happy. There's also that central position of being neither happy nor sad. What is and that case? What that's, is the case that, for you? In my own case, that's, that's where I lie. So um, talking of happiness, let's, let's even imagine, for instance, just to make the point that I was a, a happy person and uh, maybe even the happiest person on earth. Now, the, the truth of the matter is, prior to my being brought into existence, I never needed happiness or needed anything else for that matter in the first place. Let's, uh, let's say a uh, hundred years ago, just, just uh, try, and, try and imagine uh, sometime 8th of uh, September, uh, uh, 20, uh, that would be 1921. I, I didn't exist at the time. I didn't need to be happy. I didn't need to feed. I didn't need um, a, a villa in Banana Island. I didn't need a private jet. In mm. that needlessness, I was perfectly OK. Now, uh, it's a moot point to bring somebody into existence for the sake of giving the person a chance to experience happiness. Because you, as a parent, cannot guarantee Happiness. You can't even guarantee it for yourself, let alone for your child, for your progeny. And even if you, you mind you, this is this is not about children alone. It cascades further into uh, future generations. You, your your children may also have children, and those who have children too. And let's say the best you can do is to give uh, the best life you can to your your children. How about your grand or great grandchildren or great great grandchildren that you will never meet? There's nothing you can do about uh, uh, their welfare or trying to better their lot. So, bringing somebody into the world from a position of non existence into existence and you cannot guarantee that happiness is a moot point. And now, simultaneously in this world, there's the happiness and happiness causing things and the sadness and sadness causing things. So now you bring your child into the world and because you want to give that child the uh, opportunity to experience happiness, simultaneously, you also expose that child to dangers that the child never was exposed to in their non-existence. 
Let me give you a hypothetical scenario now. Let's say um, mm -hmm. I have this on yet unborn child. Let me just name him. Um, let me just name him um, uh, Junior, for instance. Now, oh, okay. Junior, as we speak right now, that's as a, we are on the studio. Name for your, for your, for your baby. <laughs> uh, for your unborn baby. Okay. As, <laughs> okay yes, a, a hypothetical baby. I just uh, conjecture to make the point. Now, yeah, uh, yeah, this baby, as, as as we speak, it, 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 Junior doesn't exist now. Yeah. So while Junior cannot experience the pleasures of life, the so-called pleasures of life, be it uh, uh, sex and the orgasm, uh, food, mm -hmm. fine wine, mm -hmm. uh, fast cars and the like, at the same time, Junior is free from being hacked to death by Boko Haram or headsmen. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if, um, if it was a female, free from being raped, free mm -hmm. from uh, pedophiles, free from all mm -hmm. harms, a plethora of harms, that okay. are inseparably tied to human existence, what is known as existential risk. Juno is free from existential risk. So if we are sincere to ourselves, because it's very easy for parents to claim they love their children. Oh, I mm. love my child. But do we, I think love is one of the most abused words in the English language. Do you really know as the parent, do you really know what love is? Because if you do, and you really love your it's one thing to claim it's another thing to actually love if you mm -hmm. know the meaning of love and you actually love your child the very last thing you want to do is to bring yeah. that child into this precarious and mostly problematic human existence i'm happy that you have given us a background i think we have a very okay. good foundation you know to start from but there's a picture that there's an image that my producer is putting up right now uh, okay. Yeah, I want to, when he pulls up that image, uh, you and I should be, uh, we should be talking to that image when it comes up. And that okay, it will pop up on screen. Because, yeah, don't worry, you see it. Don't worry, you see it. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, you see, okay. you've made you, you've made points about you've made points about how the unborn didn't ask to be born. Yes. How the unborn child didn't make any presentation uh, didn't ask to be give, born. give consent the there was no there. consent yeah yeah no consent uh, so two okay. things i don't know if my producer is ready with the picture okay before he gets ready i thought we'd have it ready now um there's, okay. a, there's a certain man there's a certain man called rafael samuel you know in india yes i know him he's my personal friend he's a friend of mine rafael is a friend of mine oh. a personal friend Oh, he's okay, an Indian. We'll he lives in Mumbai. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, we'll come to that. Uh, okay. Okay. I wanted to take a second yeah. to study that picture. Yeah. Spermatozoa in the so-called sperm race. That's what I can see. All right. If our biology, you know, teaches us right, it's a okay. race for sperm to get fertilized. Yes. It's a race. If the biology and your scientists, I mean, you have scientific yes, yes. so I'm sure this would be easy. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a scientist and engineer. Good. Yeah. Free birth. This is what each sperm does. It swims yes. towards the egg. Yes. Because of the, of the need for fertilization. This is a natural okay. occurrence. This happens naturally. And science is depicting to us exactly what happens. Let me ask you, from a perhaps philosophical point of view, or rather, from a literal perspective, any of these sperm eggs could have been you, Matthew. Exactly. And the fact is that only one egg I mean, only one of them made it to the egg, as it were. Only one. In yes. this case, for Matthew Limited, it was you. Yes. You made it to the egg. If nature... No. That, 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 that wasn't me. That was the sperm that made me. There's, there's, a, there's a whole chasm of difference between the two. It wasn't Fantastic. quite me at the time. Okay. Oh, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay. But I'm trying to say... Okay. Even the natural order of things as depicted mm. by science mm. shows that spermatozoa rush 
to be born. They want to win this race. You have to win this race for you to be born. What do you say to that? So you okay. actually really want to be born. Okay, um, let, let me clear, as usual, let me clear the, the, the misconceptions about um, how this thing works. First of all, each of us is uh, formed from sperm and egg. It takes, it takes the both of them to form the um, embryo and zygote and subsequent stages, fetus, before you get a full-fledged human being nine months after conception. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a whole chasm of uh, uh, difference uh, between a, a full-fledged person who is making a conscious choice and a sperm that is um, uh, following the laws of biochemistry. So that wasn't me. That was the sperm that made me. The sperm that made me, in conjunction with the egg that made me, both made me. That's one. Now, two, uh, let's go back. Let's uh, rewind back in time to, let's say, that time. It's not like I left a, a it's not like the sperm, like a, a penis was in a trouser and the sperm just jumped out of the, the penis in the trouser and was making its no, way towards, no, no, towards an egg in the sketch. I don't know if so you know that's how I there was, there was, there was, there was, there was a, an interaction between two already existing people, a sexual yeah. interaction, coitus, yeah. and and uh, without that, sperms cannot live on their own and meet eggs. So yeah. it had to be initiated by a, a, a party, uh, one containing the yeah. sperm, one containing the egg. So <laughs> that's not a time where the, the child to be formed can make a conscious choice. The child doesn't even exist at the time. That was preconception. And even, um, and even after conception, you don't uh, until you are born out of the womb. You don't uh, you you don't have the ability to make conscious choices because even as a baby you are born uh, like you said in Latin tabula rasa. You are born on a blank mm -hmm. slate. You just have some um, sensory perception, and you can't quite think and make rational choices until maybe you are a year, uh, several months old, where you can now recognize patterns and um, have some level of mm -hmm. cognition but you can't quite mm -hmm. articulate speech. You will learn that much later. You don't even have locomotor skills. You crawl. And it will take a while before you now, uh, your legs are firm enough to walk. So bottom line is that was not me. That was a component that was used to make me.